Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and today I want to talk to anybody who has lights permanently installed in a space. Uh, because if lights are permanently installed, they're hanging up there in a space, they're on the sidewalls, whatever, um, do you leave them on all the time? Let's answer this question. Like a lot of the questions I ask at the intros to these videos, um, the answer is you probably shouldn't. But what I want to do in this video is really dive into the why and what you can do to make things better and the exceptions uh, as to when we recommend uh, leaving power to lights all the time. Okay, so for a little bit of history, when I started with lighting, when a lot of people started with lighting, uh, we used incandescent type light sources on dimmers and they were dimmers in dimmer racks. And so these dimmer racks essentially are a breaker panel with dimmers. You know, when there's no power flowing through them, no power being called to the lights, they're hanging out there idling and they generally will have a really long serviceable lifetime. Um, if they were on all the time, yeah, you're going to, you know, they might not last as long, but it, in total, dimmers and incandescent lights did a really good job of being powered up all the time and lasting a really long time. Um, the light itself, being incandescent, wouldn't have any voltage, any power to it if it wasn't brought up by the dimmer. And then, of course, you know, over time, uh, lamps go out, uh, sockets will wear down, etc. But that's not really what we're talking about here today, because the, the shift we've seen in the past many years is that you go out today and you're going to go buy lights for a new space. The chance of you buying new incandescent fixtures to put in a space is pretty small. Um, everything now is going to be LED. It's going to be a moving light. It'll probably be an LED based moving light. But even if it's an arc source, even if it's a lamp based moving light, uh, all of these items are being powered by switch mode power supplies on the inside. They're effectively sensitive electronics like a computer okay and if you think about your venue you know you might have a space sure there might be a lobby where there is an led fixture and it's going to be on you know a hundred percent of the time or maybe it's on and it's on a schedule you know an electrician puts in a simple timer and it's on you know 16 hours a day while the place is open right that's generally the exception, not the rule. In most of these performance spaces, you're going to have a stage that maybe it's a church and it gets lit up on Sunday and Wednesday and maybe for a rehearsal, you know, and, and some occasional special events, right? And it's not going to be on all day. This is a, just a selection of hours in that day. Take a music venue. There may be music every night or maybe just on the weekends where you light up the stage. And so out of the 168 hours that you've got in a week, how many hours do those lights actually need to be powered up? A pretty small fraction, probably. Okay. And so, like I said, um, you know, today's modern lights, uh, you know, any moving lights, LEDs, whatever, they have switch mode power supplies. And these power supplies, they just don't last forever. If you buy lights from a reputable company who cares about quality like the companies we talk about here on Lauren Stage Lighting, yeah, the lights are going to last longer than if you just buy the cheapest thing you can get because power supply quality is, is one of the first things that the cheaper manufacturers skimp on and it's one of the first things that the nicer manufacturers require from their factories. And that's going to help. But ultimately, uh, no matter how you slice the cake, if you are running these lights 24 hours a day and you only need to be running them like four hours or eight, then you're putting a lot more life on the electronics and they're going to die sooner. Okay, so what's the solution? Should you go over to the breakers and flip off the breakers every night? Sure, that can work. Um, and it's not unreasonable. In fact, I remember one time I was on a corporate event years ago that was about saving energy with like HVAC system shutoffs and stuff. And they said that that's a perfectly acceptable way under code to shut off equipment. Um, but it has some downsides, which are if 
nobody remembers to shut them off, uh, then they don't get shut off, right? So there's going to be a better way. And it's a little device that uh, often looks something like this. So this is a relay, okay? And relays are something that we recommend for pretty much any permanent installation if you don't have some other means to turning the rig on and off every day you're going to use it, okay? There's a couple different types of relays you might run into and, and things you could, could get, in, get into here as options, okay? The first is if you've got some fixtures, you're looking for a simple way to just relay them on and off, you don't want to call an electrician, then the ETC Color Source Relay is a simple DMX activated relay. You typically, you can set it a couple different ways, but the simplest is just set it to a channel like 512. When 512 goes up above 50%, it turns on power to the connected fixtures. It can do up to 10 amps, so you can put multiple fixtures on it, and it's just power comes straight through. And, and these are great. Um, they're not the cheapest, but you don't have to bring in an electrician in order to hardwire something. So in that case, they often can be, okay? And those can work if you just need a couple relays, if you move them around a lot, etc. Then you can just set them up in your console so that, hey, the console turns on, boom, relay turns on power to the lights, they're able to work. Uh, another way, though, is to hardwire, okay? There's, there's a few ways to do this. One, you can go out and you could go get a Lintec, I believe it's a PDS model, a uh, very simple sound system type sequencer, where you hook up, you have an electrician hook up, uh, usually like four or eight or 12 breakers, and there's an on switch somewhere, you can put it in a closet, you can have it behind a key with a key access, and you know, you hit the switch, breakers come on in order, they're made for sound systems, but there's no reason you can't use them for lighting as well. Probably the best option, though, when it comes to relays for lighting, which, again, it's going to just extend the life of your stuff if you're in a permanent installation. And it's going to, for not a lot of money, allow you to extend that life for a longer time. And these relays, when they're well built, like the Lintec ones, like the ETC ones, they last like... A really stinking long time. They're going to last as long as a breaker panel lasts, um, you know, decades long. Okay, so what do you look for in a relay? Well, there's a couple different ways you can get it done. Um, first, I've got just here, this is actually an ETC dimmer, but the relays look about the same, um, is a hardwire to a junction box type model. Now, the ETC Foundry uh, DMX relay is a two channel relay. Um, so you can hook it up to a 20 amp circuit, you have two independent channels within that that you can turn stuff on and off, and it just hardwires to a junction box, and then gets DMX through a terminal block. Okay, that's great when you've already got a facility, maybe the electrical comes from different panels in different closets uh, for your rig, and it's just easier to run DMX to a junction box uh, that is close to your lights, power, set, set that, that, uh, those outlets, that those lights plug into to wire through the relay. Okay, uh, then we also have uh, available the ETC uh, Foundry Mini Panels, which are a four or eight circuit model. And the eight circuit is typically, at least as of now, if supply chain doesn't kill us in the future, I think it's around $100 per circuit, which is really not bad if you think about it. Because on a circuit, you can have a couple big moving lights, many PARs, many, uh, you know, LED ellipsoidals, whatever it is that you're protecting on those circuits, yeah, they cost a lot more than a hundred bucks, right? Um, and so investing up front when you're going to buy gear or if you want to make the gear that you have, whether it be lights, LED walls, whatever, if you want to make that stuff last the longest it can and, and be the best steward of the resources you have, then we just can't recommend enough using a relay because it's so simple, any electrician can install them. Um, you just come out of your breaker panel into this mini panel that can mount straight to drywall, um, and then from the mini panel to the lights. Or there's a couple ways you can do it. You can actually just put it side by side and feed the hot in and feed it back to the breaker panel. That's up to your electrician. Um, you send it DMX, then it has DMX. Uh, in order, it gets an address just like a light. Same thing, bring up the channel, everything turns on, you're good to go. The only gotchas, the only real things that you really want to worry about with relays is make sure you have good control from your console 
and make sure when you do go to shut off relays that you're shutting off your fixtures first and any fixtures that have cooling fans are getting a good 5-10 minutes to cool things off before you just cut that power. Okay, we want to make sure everything can still cool right because if you had everything at full and you just take off the relay, you know, in the long term that could be damage. Okay, so best practice, always shut off the lights first, give them a few minutes, then the relay can shut off. All right. There's different ways to manage this depending on what console and stuff you use. But overall, the, the concept is that, you know, you get something like this, you get a relay. It's going to help all of your lights last longer so you can get more out of them before you start running into issues, which with LED based fixtures in installations, by and large, you run into power supply issues as these things age. That is like the biggest thing that happens to them. And so why not double, triple the amount of time you can get out of your rig with just, you know, a hundred bucks a circuit for a foundry panel? Or, you know, these little guys I think are under $200 a piece. Even the color source ones, which don't require an electrician, are only a few hundred bucks a piece. And so if you're at the point where you have gear that's expensive enough that you really want to and need to make it last, then... I really do recommend, don't leave it on all the time, okay? Find a way to turn it off, whether it's just the breakers, free, or even better, a more reliable method, like a relay panel, so that you're able to have this stuff turn off automatically when you're done using it, and then you'll get the most life out of it. Now, the only caveat I do have is I don't put house lights on relays, okay? Because we always think about worst case scenarios, and not that we're really worried about these relays failing, I mean, because they're industrial components, they really do last a long time. Um, but more than that, we're just worried about user error. Like, if you go ahead and you've got these little relays and um, someone doesn't know how to turn them on, someone starts a new show file and forgets to turn, to turn them on in park or something like that, um, or just, you know, something happens, and there's people in the building and you can't get the house lights powered on, that would be what we call real bad, right? So house lights are the one thing because they're so critical to safety that I just, I wouldn't put those on a relay, but anything else, I, I really do strongly recommend it. So I hope this helps you today to get the most out of your lighting. I know it can sound like it's just another expense that you don't want, but in the long term, especially if you're buying good quality stuff, we just can't recommend using relays enough because I can tell you countless stories of places with bad power and, and whatnot where you know people are able to use relays, get a lot more out of their lights. Even if you have good power and it's clean and everything's happy, you're still going to triple or more the amount of time you can get out of these fixtures before you run into power supply failure. So if that sounds interesting to you, of course, we've got them at Learn Stage Lighting Gear as well as anything else you could possibly need with lighting. Feel free to shoot us a message, ask for a quote. We're glad to help you with whatever projects you have. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you in our next video if you're subscribed. Thanks.